Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! card review slash discussion type video, and this time it is going to be on a new card spoiled for release in Code of the Duelist, the set that will be coming out to us in the August 2017 time frame, where it will be the first set of the Vrains era, and it will introduce Link summoning to us in a core set, rather than just having the ones that we will have from the starter deck for the year. All that sort of nonsense. And it also just includes support for a bunch of other archetypes like Light Swarms, and in this case, Dark Worlds. The card in question for this video is a new continuous trap meant to be direct Dark World support and themed Dark World support in the form of Dark World Brainwashing. Now that name is obviously tentative, it could easily change between the time between now and its release in the TCG when it gets an official English translation, but as of right now the direct translation from the OCG's name is Dark World Brainwashing. Now. It actually has a cool bit of artwork going on for it too because it looks like it's got something really like lore based as far as its artwork because this is an artwork similar to what was on Dark Smog, uh, meaning that Raiko is just getting dicked over by the Dark World people. Uh, so like, I'm, I'm very interested to find out how this plays into the lore between Dark Worlds and Light Swarms. Uh, it seems like they're playing on that a lot uh, with cards like Dark Smog and with Br Dark World Brainwashing. But anyway, this card is a very interesting card. I've already done a couple videos in dual form playing with this card, and if you are someone that watches all of my stuff that I do, you'll know that my opinion of this card is um, not the highest. <laughs> but basically, to judge a card like this, you have to look at it from a couple of different angles. You have to look at it objectively and practically. Uh, specifically in the case of Dark Worlds, specifically because of the deck being very like flawed in terms of how it handles mechanic wise, uh, how it handles itself mechanic wise, uh, because of just like how like inherently unfair the mechanic of just discarding cards is. But regardless, basically this card is meant to be more support for the Dark World theme, and Dark Worlds hopefully could find some way back into meta relevance with some new support because they haven't been meta relevant since 2012 when they won YCS Long Beach. But this card's effect is, when an opponent's monster effect is activated, while you have three or more cards in your hand, you can target one Dark World monster on the field, return it to the hand. And if you do, the activated opponent's effect becomes, discard one random card from your opponent's hand. So, objectively, this card effect is very good for what it does. What it does is it turns your opponent's monster effects to activate literally anywhere. It doesn't have to be a monster effect on the field turns those effects into your opponent, being you, the controller of Dark World Brainwashing, discards a random card. So, what is this good for? It's good for triggering your secondary Dark World effects. Because all of the Dark World cards, with exception of Beige, have an effect that it makes the card better when discarded by your opponent. It gives the card more effects if it's discarded by your opponent rather than discarded by yourself. Those effects hardly ever trigger, and the only cards that can reliably trigger them are things like Ceruli, or now this card so there's that but this card is very very good on an objective level because it allows you to trigger those dark world secondary effects one and two it's not once per turn it it's not once per turn people don't seem to understand this is that it's not once per turn you can activate it as many times as there are dark worlds on the board and as long as you still maintain three cards in hand at point of activation three or more cards rather uh, but Practically, this card's not the best. Practically, this card is a five-card combo. And that's pretty extensive and strenuous when you think about the deck that it's going into. Dark World Brainwashing requires you to have Brainwashing, have a Dark World on the field, and then have three other cards in hand, of which two of them at least need to be good discardable cards, or else you are literally flipping a 50-50 coin. With at least one card not being a good discardable card, like a Dark World monster, you're at least giving yourself a 75% shot at your opponent randomly discarding one of the Dark World cards and triggering a secondary effect. Maybe doing something like Silva, Gold, Beige, Rainbow, something like that to actually put another Dark World back on the field so you can use Brainwashing again in that turn if you didn't already have another Dark World. But unfortunately, if you hold monsters, you're not like progressing your game state. And if you hold cards that are not monsters, just to make this card live, you are diluting your chances of it giving you a optimal outcome. Practically speaking, this card has very, very, very many problems, because the Dark World deck itself is already very resource-intensive in terms of how it makes its plays, and this is a very good card, objectively, for what it's trying to be, and what it's trying to provide the deck, but it unfortunately just doesn't do it in the right way, in the right method, 
the deck needs cards that let you advance its engine further a lot quicker than literally having a five card combo like this. So, objectively, I think the card is fantastic. I think its effect is great in terms of how it was, like, presented. It's a not once per turn form of effect negation for a monster effect anywhere, and it has some rather, some rather extensive uh, uh, requirements put upon it. That part is good. It was designed properly, but the problem is, is that it just doesn't mesh with the archetype in a practical sense. It can be searched off snow, that's cool, so it meshes in that aspect, but everything else about it just doesn't really work that well, because it requires you to bounce your field, hold a hand, which directly conflicts with cards like Drag Down Into the Grave, which is one of your key starter cards. It just, it just doesn't seem to work that well, in terms of its practical use. It's still a very, very good and well-rounded and well-designed card, but I feel like it could have been designed better and could have actually assisted the deck. They could have trimmed down on these requirements for activation just a tiny bit, and they could have made the card once per turn. And then that would have been infinitely more playable. So you still have to bounce a Dark World card? Yeah, sure. But if you had to have one card in hand or two cards in hand before you activated, then that would just be easier for you to get to. It would be easier for you to use it, and then you would have more chances to actually be carried and rewarded by your Dark World cards getting their secondary effects off. Whereas currently with this card, in like I said, in a practical sense, it is super hard to resolve this card, and even though it's not once per turn, that's not even that big of an issue, because it can be easily played around in most cases. I, it's It's kind of strange that we're getting this kind of a card as Dark World support, when the deck is already established to have a problem, and that problem is starter cards. You're more likely to not get your deck rolling at all than you are to just lose to out-resourcing your opponent, your opponent out-resourcing you. Once the deck gets moving, it's incredibly hard to stop. But the deck has such a hard time getting rolling because it has so few actual good starter cards. Or access into good extenders and stuff like that. Like, there's, there's problems that are built into the archetype itself, which kind of balance out its unfairness in terms of how the mechanic was designed where it's literally just like you get rewarded for discarding cards which inherently means you're going to be playing every good draw one discard one card in the game uh meaning you're going to be able to advance your engine further in that regard so like there's there's a lot of things that i have to say about this card in terms of it's just not practically viable i don't think unless we get some other card that makes the dark world deck super super good at getting out of the early game this card just doesn't fit the bill. It just doesn't fit the theme. It forces the deck to play slow and stun-oriented when that's not the way Dark Worlds were even designed from the get-go. They were designed to be very aggressive, very resource-based of just draw cards, turbo, discard your Dark Worlds, get effects going, kill people. That's how the Dark World deck was designed. And this card directly conflicts with that. Because you should almost never have a hand with a Dark World deck if you're playing it in a turbo and an as intended oriented uh, setting. So, I don't know. This card is very neat. I'm very glad that we're getting more Dark World support. Like, don't don't get me wrong. I'm very glad that we're getting more Dark World support because it's a deck that's gone unsupported for years. But they could have definitely done better with this card or than this card. There are already cards that exist in the anime that we never got that they could have just printed. Like Dark World Corridor, which is literally add a Dark World from your deck to your hand and discard a card from your hand. That would be a starter. That would be Rhoda. That would be add snow, discard snow, get a snow search for a starter card like Dark World Dealings or Gates. And that would have been probably fine. Like, let's be completely honest. That probably would have been fine. Because, I mean, sure, you get to advance the engine, but it's still Dark Worlds. So, I don't know. I want to know what you guys think about this card in the comments down below. I think it's objectively very good. I want to say this, I'm not just shitting on this card for no reason. I think this card is objectively, and design-wise, very properly, very well designed, and very objectively good. But in a practical sense of usability, not so much. So I want to know what you guys think about that in the comments down below. Let me know what your thoughts are and all that sort of nonsense. And if you watched my dual videos, then I guess just let me know. <laughs> let me know uh, that you watched them, uh, and what you thought of them. Because I tried to build decks specifically to resolve this card and had trouble doing it the entire time. So, anyway, 
Let me know what your thoughts are, as I've already said in the comments down below. But other than that, like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links are in the description of my Facebook, as well as my Patreon page. If you want to get in on a monthly giveaway, or just get on my Discord server, or just support the channel in general to help me make better future content, you could definitely go check that out and maybe find it in the goodness of your heart to help contribute towards making the channel a better thing going forward. I'm trying to save up for some better gear at this point so that I can live stream or just like film matches at locals, maybe like film matches at regionals and upload them or uh, live stream those, get a better computer so that I can live stream more frequently from home as well. There's a lot of things I've got in the works that I'm literally just lacking the funds for that I'm trying to get, uh, get going. So if you want to help support that, then definitely go check that out. But other than that, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as always. Again, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. And take care, guys. I will see you in the next video. Not shitting on this card at all, but I kind of am. Sucks practically, good objectively. <laughs> take care.